I am really excited to have Amira Beth. Amira Beth is a mirror healer, an incarnated. Now my mind goes blank when I have to <laughs> do all of this. Um, it's like, you know, Amira Beth, you know me tongue-tied so i'm going to let you introduce yourself because to me you are an impure a, a really empowering goddess pre priestess you just open the way for so many people to heal and move forward on their amazing journey so with that i'm going to ask you to broaden the scope of how you do all these wonderful things okay and a little bit <laughs> thank, about, you, thank know. you jennifer <laughs> Um, so my name is Amira Beth. I am a Mer healer. I am an incarnated Atlantean priestess and an incarnated Mer being. Um, I am a conduit to the teachings of Archangel Metatron and the magic of sacred geometry. Um, I also bring forward the wisdom of the Mer beings to help us through ascension and the new paradigm. I live on the island of Kauai. Um, I have a personal one-on-one -on -one healing practice, mostly through hypnosis and regression therapy. Um, I bring people to the island regularly mm -hmm. for group retreats, individual couples retreats. You can come see me on the island. And I also steward a sacred geometry, uh, a crystal-infused sacred geometry clothing company, a high vibrational um, um, clothing a uh, company that infuses and our crystals mixed with sacred geometry in, in the ink. So we have uh, lots of really fun, exciting things to talk about today, Jen, and I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, you have been on a few times on the show. It's always inspiring and informative, so I had to have you back on, especially since I've been looking at those shirts and all the amazing <laughs> retreats you're doing, and I'm going, uh -huh. okay. We need to get the word out <laughs> yes. of all this amazing things that you're doing. I mean, for me, I actually studied light language mm -hmm. um, with someone many, many years ago. So I know sacred geometry is so powerful. Yes. So it is time for a time right now of just shifting timelines, as mm -hmm. you know. and. A lot of people are just feeling this really intense energy and wondering, okay, what's going on? Right. So what would you like to explain to them of what is going on? <laughs> you know, and, and putting the intangible into words can, can sometimes be a challenge uh, yes. because our, our right abstract mind uh, sees and feels and knows that all these shifts and changes, you know, are pretty significant and the left brain wants to make sense out of it. Like the left brain wants like what wants an explanation and and the words and an, and an expression to help understand and ground in all these magnificent changes that we seem to be going through like day by day, it seems like. So I'm going to do my best to put words to something that there really is no words to because it's really about free feeling and yes. vibration. And it's about intuition. And it's about um, not being on a script at all anymore. <laughs> We're totally off script um, as we ride the waves and the ebbs and flows. And um, timelines are, I, I feel, a really big topic to address and try and explain right now. Uh, because there, you know, there was a time when, when uh, if you were an intuitive or a psychic, you know, you could look into people's futures, <laughs> and you right. could see timelines pretty clearly of destinations and events and things that were going to come up for them. That um, you know, that just things that, that were going to come up karmically in their life, or th things that were going to come through them. Um, uh, to help them or whatever and, and it feels like really since the beginning of the year that kind of all bets are off and that we can no longer look at anything as like a sure thing because the potential for possibilities and the potential for um, 
options with our free will mixed with divine will is so immense right now. And we are so off script and co-creating like really in the present moment that um, it's almost impossible to say for sure what's going to happen. All we know, all I know, or I feel is that we do have destiny and purpose and that we individually and collectively have asked to be delivered to our destiny and our purpose, right? We've asked to yes. be delivered. So yes. what that requires is no longer us asking for um, the sure thing or the one or two pathways or options to get there. We really get to co-create it individually and co collectively as we go along. And what I'm finding is that the universe is giving me many, many choices and many, many options and many, many pathways. And I am getting to choose in the moment instead of it being something that is kind of predecided by my soul. Now, some of it's predecided by our souls. The ultimate destination, I believe, is pre predecided. Mm -hmm. But how we get there is changing. And so I, I use the analogy of um, um, going from the cold pool to the hot pool. <laughs> right. So if you've been, okay, so relationships, we'll just talk relationships because everybody's looking for love, right? Right. So you have been in karmic relationships, which most of us have been most all of our life, karmic relationships where we're learning and growing through suffering, learning and growing through lessons and hardships and experiences. You've kind of been, we've kind of been in the cold pool. The hot pool is about being with somebody where the, the, there is little or maybe no karma or no lessons. It's completely dharmic, divine, sacred union. It just clicks. It just fits. And you've both completed all these levels of learning and these things that have happened that cause uh, uh, the, the precipitation of, of hanging on to, you know, karmic lessons and hanging on to... You know, we have to review this again and, and the love of longing and all these things that we do in these in these relationships that are trying to, to elevate us. We, we, we hang on to that. But it's really hard to go from the cold pool straight into the hot pool because our vibration, our frequency, and what we're used to is not in alignment with, like, that feeling of, ah, I'm in, like, the hot pool. I'm in right. that warmth. I'm in that tenderness. I'm in that new paradigm where the level of learning and the lessons aren't in the like the intensity that we're used to in, in the cold pool. So along the way, spirit will give us people or situations that put us into the warm pool. <laughs> in between. <laughs> and, and, you know, emulations, simulations, and people to help us warm up to the vibration so our frequency, so our vibration is a closer match to that which we are going in the hot pool. Right. So right now, for instance, I've, I've come out of the cold pool <laughs> with my last relationship and, I, and I, I, I see and I feel and I know like intuitively in my soul, I have uh, my hot pool guy is coming. Not my hot mm -hmm. pool guy, but my hot pool guy. The right. guy I'm going to swim in the hot pool with. <laughs> right. But but because I'm so used to the cold pool, and the dynamic of. Um, you know, the, the karmic lessons and the intensity and the drama along the way, I'm experiencing warm pool people, men, right. relationships to orbit through my experience to get me used to that feeling and that vibration of what it's going to be like to finally jump into the hot pool with, with, with the relationship that is, is going to become my, my destiny and my purpose person. So right now we're experiencing an influx of coming and going of timelines where one person, one timeline will suddenly drop, drop or fall away. It'll just be done. And immediately something else and, and relationships aren't the only situation. You, you, can, you can apply this to, to anything that you are purposing. Right. But everything is relationship driven because, you know, earth life is about relationships it's about interconnectedness. It's about um, interdependence. So along the way, we will get these people in these situations that emulate or simulate where we're going to warm us up to that purpose or that situation. So timelines are coming in really fast. New relationships, new experiences are coming in really fast. They're moving through our experience and they're dropping off. Okay, let me ask you a quick question. Okay. 
on that point. Now, let's say you meet someone, you feel like they're it, and then all of a sudden they decide and they just drop off. Mm -hmm. How do you I, – I definitely realize – Great question. You can't, you can't be – depending on that person coming back, but yet the energy or that feeling that they started you with yes. can come into with yes. a new relationship. It's not about hanging on to the person or the experience. It's about hanging on to the vibration of, oh, that's what it feels like. Now I know what the hot pool is going to feel like. So this person was warming me up and attuning me to that frequency. So I'm getting a little bit closer to be a good vibrational match because it's all about vibrational match to my purpose and my destiny. Yes. It's about emulating and remembering the feeling and the vibration and creating through joy. Completely allowing ourselves to create through joy. We used to have to create ourselves through suffering and lessons. I don't believe that's true anymore. No, I believe I don't either. that we, we are here for really one reason, and that's to find and be in our joy and to connect with joy. And so allowing those people and those experiences to bring us to that feeling of joy, not hanging on to the person, hang on to the, hang on to the feeling. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you. And it's like this time right now is there is a lot of that in-between feelings because mm -hmm. the big eclipse coming up next month. Yeah. So a lot of people are having a lot of shifting right now and juggling of feelings and emotions, things that they learn may be popping up. And it's just to remember the good feelings and understand the lessons that was learned from it. Yeah. So it's, you can release it and let it go. It's to, to let go of the suffering. That's what it's all about. Like we, we are no longer bound to karma and suffering. It's over if we choose it, right? And most people right. don't know that we, we get to choose something different now. Now, what if somebody really is hanging on to that one person and it's creating suffering and they're having a hard time getting over that person? What do you suggest for them to shift that perspective of this one person has to be it? So I, I love that question because I think that applies to so many people in so many situations. You have to go into a state of grace and trust and surrender. And instead of going into your love of longing, we all have a love of longing. You yes. have to leave that love of longing behind and love the gifts and love the energy that we felt from that person when we were really in tune with them, that feeling that they gave us. Because it's that feeling that we're going to bring forward into the next situation and not that person. And we're human. We get attached to people. Like we yeah. really do. Um, I think especially women, you know, yeah. we get very emotionally attached to, to our partners. Or, and, and we kind of put them on a pedestal and we put the, uh, the experience on a pedestal of that's the ultimate. It can't get any better. Well, that's not true. A, a person who is really your beloved, the person who is really here to show up for you in, in this realm, will not leave you longing or insecure or wanting more. Good point. So if, if you are attached to somebody who always makes you feel like not 90% full, 80% full, and you can't quite get to that threshold, that's not your person. The person who is meant for you will show up for you every day, and you will be at that 100% with them click all the time. Not that there won't be challenges, but they will be like, okay, hey, babe, we've got this thing come up. Let's work through this together. We're still at 100%. We're just going to talk about all the weaving in between. And it really is the blending of understanding each other's persona it's it's yeah. all the experience it just blending the way all the different you know we're letting go of the suffering but we're still going to have memories mm -hmm. we might have those triggers yes but i think with the the right person those triggers will be 
minimal. Yeah. They'll come and go really fast, you know, and the communication and the respect and the integrity will be very high. And you really won't need to call someone for confirmation. You right. will know. You'll just know. Exactly. So relationships are changing. You know, sacred union, partnerships and sacred union um, are, are, are really on deck right now. Purpose-driven sacred unions. And, and I believe the closer we get to and move through the big eclipse on the, the 21st of August, uh, that gateway is going to be wide open for many of us. So in the meantime, we get these simulations, these simulations, and the universe is asking us to kind of be in this void place, you know, this kind of abyss yeah. where yeah. nothing is certain, but everything is possible and fine tuned. So sometimes these people come in because we get to go, okay, I like this, this, and this, but you know, universe, I really, this over here needs to be fine tuned. I would really prefer this in my partner. We get to literally ask for that. Well, it's like I used to always say, I want all the best aspects of everybody I, I know that I've dated because all the mm -hmm. great parts were great. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we want to write those down. Maybe we want to go back and you want to remember some of these partnerships and some of these qualities of these people that like were so awesome and make a list of them. And that's your petition to the universe of I'll take that and I'll take that and I'll take that and focusing what we want, never what we don't want, always exactly. phrasing it in, I, I desire this, I prefer this, I, I desire that. And making like that conscious list in our mind of even if it's a career, you can think about, you know, career or work that is in alignment with that too, or a relationship, or maybe even, you know, something that comes up with um, health or with family. And this is the time, this void period is where we really tune into our soul and be soul led. There's a lot of talk about being heart led, which is a beautiful thing, but our hearts tend to want to um, lament. And our hearts tend to want to um, hang on to that which has lived past its prime. Your soul always knows true north. So I'm, I'm doing my best to become soul led and purpose-led and let that go out in front of me and draw that which to me that has my name on it. Now, with your practice, is there a part of your, by the way, I have done some work with Amira Beth. That's why I know she's wonderful. She did a tremendous job with me and I, I learned so much through the experience and that's one reason why I wholeheartedly, she's amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so it's, it's those little bits that in your practice, with those little things, do you help them figure out true north? Yes. Sometimes we have to know what we want by knowing what we don't want. And so noticing what we don't want <laughs> brings us into deeper alignment with that which we do want, right? right? So in my practice, I work a lot with regression therapy through hypnosis. So past life regression, which are actually same or simultaneous lives, and then through something that I developed that's kind of exclusive to, to me and my teachings called a soul progression, mm -hmm. which is where I actually take people through trance or hypnosis into the void of all that is. And we get to talk to and connect with their guides, their ancestors, you know, those, those who know them and love them, and even, even other current life souls, and really find out what's going on, how to release, um, how to move forward, how to bring in gifts. You know, the void is where everything is possible. Yes, been there. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's where, it's where we can find out and where we can attune our dials and our frequency, just like the dials on a radio, closer to what our heart and our soul is really wanting. And create from that point, kind of create from that zero point. Yes. And there is so many things out there to assist people to get that to that zero point. Yeah. Um, and, and one of those it, things, 
being open to all potential of possibilities and not limiting ourselves anymore in any way. So if you, okay, so this, this is an example I like to give. So if you, okay, so have a thing for um, Keanu Reeves. You think Keanu Reeves is just like the most amazing guy you've ever seen. And you're like, I love, you know, I love Keanu Reeves. That's the kind of person right. I like to be with. So if you envision the vibration and the energy of him or of anybody, you're, you're, you're like looking right. at as the ultimate, your subconscious doesn't know if you're really thinking about that person or the multiple people out there who could be a complete emulation of his energy. So I say, shoot for exactly what you want. Put up there exactly what is like the ultimate for you. Be in the vibration of what it would feel like or what it feels like to be with that person. And let the universe bring to you those that fit, fit into that vibration. Because if it's not Keanu Reeves, but it's somebody who makes you feel exactly like you feel when you look at that picture, who cares? Right? Right. Exactly. You know, it's kind of a silly example, but we really limit ourselves and we end up settling. We don't have to settle anymore. We really and, don't. And it's almost dangerous right now to settle. Yes. Because then you're off your true north. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing for eons, you know. We've been settling in karma. So with the eclipse coming up, and you mentioned a gateway to porthole opening, mm -hmm. let's talk more about exactly the energy of this. Okay. It is, it is a eclipse that there's two. There's one in Leo. And then the other one would be in Cancer, correct? No, it'd be uh, Virgo. Virgo. Okay. Yeah. So what are the two energies that, I mean, Virgo is very much the perfectionist, one in service. Mm -hmm. Service. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Think about the Virgo is house. very much about purity of intention. Yes. And, and acts of service. And being, be, being in our pure essence. And so this, this eclipse, when it happens, it's really going to start to usher in a new paradigm where we stay truer to our own selves, where we stay truer to our own intentions and to our own true north. The shifts that are happening planetarily and in our structures and, and you know, the, the corporations and the government and all that out there, that's going to completely com continue to be dismantled. That's going to continue to change. Mm -hmm. But the real change, the real, the real gift of ascension is about our inner. It's about our inner world and what we do on the, mac on the micro level within ourselves affecting the macro. Exactly. The most important thing we can do for, you know, for ascension or for evolution is to be on our purpose and is to be the ripple effect and live authentic and live in our integrity. The deeper we live in our own integrity, because if we don't have integrity with ourselves, we can't really have integrity with anybody else. So this year is really about becoming your own inner guru. It's, we're in a one year. Sovereignty, being your, in your own mastery, being in your own inner guru, and self-integrity. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel the possibilities to make that reality, it, it's stronger than ever right now, but we have to believe, number one. <laughs> we have to um, know that we no longer have to settle for anything or anyone and take action and allow the universe to come in and meet us. And not get distracted by... The Bright, shiny world. things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Purpose driven, focus yes. driven. Yeah, and, and part of the Virgo energy, you know, Virgos can be very focused on what it is, how they want things arranged. You know, and, and we've got the North Node in Leo too, and that's all about heart, and that's all about joy, and that's all about expansion. So, so many th good things happening in the astrology, and right now it feels kind of 
hard and uncertain. We're kind of like I said in this kind of like this void, but it really is in the darkness where these where we see the stars and we get to sit and we get to observe and we get to pick and choose. Exactly. Now, with picking and choosing, you have chosen to design and make some amazing shirts. Yes. That I think will really elevate people's energy and help them to focus their energy even more. So I yes. want to hear how this came about and more about your designs okay. and the whole process. Okay, so several years ago, um, Archangel Metatron came to me as a guide. Um, and I started working with Archangel Metatron on manifesting some different things in my life. And I started, of course, learning about Metatron's cube and sacred geometry. And I found it so completely fascinating and, and mind-blowing, this whole idea of the blueprint of creation being in these geometric and shapes and patterns that comprise, you know, that comprise everything in the universe. So um, I started studying sacred geometry through him and teaching others about sacred geometry because Archangel Metatron told me it was the gateway out of the matrix. Um, along that path, a few years ago, he, he asked me to put Metatron's cube, his, his geometry on my back as a tattoo. And it's so, absolutely gorgeous. So you don't say no to an archangel, right? So I was like, okay, my whole back, really? But I did it. And so I have my whole, my whole back piece is Metatron's cube and within the spheres. And if you're not familiar with Metatron's cube, um, I'll just show you a quick picture through one of, one of my shirts. It, it's, a, it's a shape that most people have seen, but they don't always know what it is. So in the spheres, on the outer spheres, I put in the different elements, and I put the three phases of the moon of, at the top and the earth at the bottom, and it's just this very beautiful artistic piece that he told me would be a map for people to follow me out of the matrix through sacred geometry, and I didn't really know what that meant. I thought, okay, I do yoga, so people behind me are going to see, you know, the geometry. Right. And them because sacred geometry, the shapes are transcendental. They belong to all of us. So even if you don't know what the flower of life is, even if you don't know what Metatron's cube is or the planet solids, it will still change and affect you because it's a, it's a part of all of us. So I thought, okay, that, that, that's what's going to happen. People are going to see that it's going to help them. So fast forward about two, three years later, I moved to the island of Kauai. And um, I meet this man who also has Metatron's cube <laughs> tattooed on his arm. And he has this crystal infused sacred geometry clothing company where he is taking crystals and crushing them into dust, micro dust, mixing them into the ink and, and screen printing sacred geometry onto organic clothing. And I think that's the most fabulous thing that I've ever heard. <laughs> Because yes. it incorporates the energy of crystals, and he was using a five crystal combination at that time, and sacred geometry together on, on nice organic clothing that you wear in your energy field. So, so we became friends. We started a relationship together. I started selling all his clothes for him. And, you know, one day about four or five months into, into our relationship, he said, you know, you're really good at this. You're doing great with the clothes. I don't really have time to take care of the company. Buy it from me. So I did. So he sold me his company called Wisdom Wear, Wisdom Wear. And, uh, you know, I, I was immediately excited. And Archangel Metatron was like, see, this is, the, this is the map. This is what you're going to do for people on a massive scale to return sacred geometry to everybody through beautiful clothing. So I took over the clothing company, and um, shortly after I started, I began using the um, Andaras from Santa Cruz, California, and working with a man named Mickey Magic, who is in Santa Cruz, who is the, the one and only steward for true Andara crystals, come from Lady Nelly's land. And if you go to andaramagic.com, you can read a little bit about Mickey and his story with Lady Nelly. So I started using the Andaras because of their, their frequency. They are the premier crystal or the premier pieces of earth for ascension and evolution. The Andaras come in all these amazing colors. And they, um, you know, they work directly on your DNA. 
and directly on your heart energy. So, and, and I had been collecting Andaras for a little while and, and I thought it was just a fantastic idea. So I began using um, um, the partially micronized dust um, through Mickey Magic and breaking them down uh, completely into micronized dust and fusing them into the ink. And you can see the Sri, Sri Yantra shirt that I yeah. have here and mixing them into the ink and screen printing various sacred geometry images onto organic bamboo and cotton clothing. So examples of some of the variety, and I do the front and the back of everything. So this is a really neat variation of um, the Eye of Horus inside the Flower of Life with the Eye of Horus on the back. And so I started just doing all these amazing like combinations and colors of shirts and dresses and tank tops. I do men's and women's clothing. And, and literally when people receive my clothing, when they put it on, they feel a change in their vibration, in their frequency, in their energy, because you are aligning yourself through sacred geometry and through the energy of the Andars, you're aligning yourself to the blueprint of creation. That's what sacred geometry is. And you don't even really have to understand what that's all about to feel the effects. Because again, geometry, sacred geometry belongs to all of us. It's esoteric information that is being returned to the masses because it is the gateway out of the matrix, when you uh, meditate on sacred geometry, when you, uh, you know, when you draw it or color it, when you wear it in your field, your body, your brain, your energy starts to elevate and starts to change. So I have this vision to get 144,000 people in my crystal infused sacred geometry clothing because that's the ascension number in the Bible. And I feel that when there are 144,000 of us wearing crystal infused sacred geometry clothing, that we will create a vibrational tipping point for the collective. They're all so beautiful. And, and I got to say, when you were holding up those stones, uh -huh. I literally felt it in my heart. Yeah, because you can. They go straight, straight to your heart center. And um, people have really profound changes and emotions and um, feelings. And, 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 and the, the Andaras are very powerful, but they're also very gentle. So when they start to work on you and change you and the lifting off and the, and, and the layers come, it feels like a nice warm bath. I like, I like the water analogy very much. Yes. And they, they start to change you from the inside out. And, you know, people will tell me, and, and, and I feel as well when I put a shirt on, I just feel different um, because of the geometric frequency, the crystals, and really the intention that I put into the clothes that we get to do something together individually for ourselves and collectively, all of us working together, forming this grid, you know, this grid through the geometry that is creating a vibrational tipping point um, in our collective consciousness and helping with, with evolution and ascension. Um, so that's my wisdom wear story. Um, you can find, I have an online store, so you can find me at wisdomware.org. And there's just a little website on the tag, wisdomware.org. Um, I talk about the story about the Andaras, about what makes them so special, about my vision for the company, and then um, I have a store with all these fantastic clothing items for, for men and women um, that I'll ship to you. And just even looking at them, I can feel the shift of energy and the words of the people wearing them. Yeah. You really, yeah. you really see the difference and it's like, wow, I, I got to get that out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, and I have so much passion for this. I mean, I just, I have an absolute passion for, for this clothing company, for, for giving people something high vibrational to wear and to, um, you know, to, to affect others. Because if you or I have a shirt on, you know, even everybody looking at my shirt today, like the imprint will affect mm -hmm. you. The implant will do something to the hemispheres of your brain, your subconscious, your DNA, and it will shift you in very, very subtle but profound ways. So, you know, eventually there'll be um, bedding 
I'm going to start doing pillowcases and bedding with crystal infused sacred geometry. There'll be kids' clothes, there'll be maternity clothes, there'll be active wear. Like, I really have this vision to make a full empire of crystal infused sacred geometry clothing for, for everybody. Now, do you worry about running out of the, the crystals, though? No. No, um, um, there's, a, there's enough crystals and dust in the world to keep me going for quite a while. And you know, and if that ever did happen, if the, because the Andars are finite, at some right. point they, they will be gone. Um, when that happens, it just means there'll be something else to come in that's supposed to take over. Now, another thing I wanted to ask is, how do you take care of this? I would be afraid of washing it and washing away the, the crystals are in there for good. They're kind of cooked in. Um, the bamboo fabric, I use mostly bamboo and, and some organic cotton, likes to be treated gently. So I always recommend people that you wash inside out. You can do a washing machine on, on a gentle cycle, really as best, or, or hand wash. Um, the bamboo, if you've never worn it, it's the best fabric on the planet. It's super, it's super soft. soft. And once you start to wear it, it's like you don't want to wear anything else. Um, but it does like to be treated just a little bit more gently. Um, I like to hang dry my clothing. That just makes the shirts themselves uh, last a little bit longer. Um, if you throw it into the dryer for a little while, that's okay too. But just know that, you know, the crystals and, and the ink, like that, that's there for good. And if you take a little bit of good care of your shirt, it will last you many, many washings in many, many years. Now, I got a question, uh, another one that just popped in my head. If somebody says, I'm not sure which design that I should get, do you make recommendations? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I can, I'm pretty good at matching up people with symbols or with shirt colors and symbols. But I just will tell you, just pick what, what calls to you. Like, what are you attracted to? You know, people are, everybody's attracted to something else. I do some different variations of the flower of life. Like I do this really cute heart shape variation. And I have a lot of people, I do booths around Kauai. Um, right. you know, vendor booths, art walks. And I have a lot of a lot of people who are very attracted to the clothes and the symbols and they don't know why, but they see something really pretty, like a heart, and they're just drawn to it. And they don't even have to know what it means. They just know that like something about their intuition or the energy draws them then to it. And then I also do a lot of the heart chakra symbol. Right. Also, which is very nice. So just go with what like what visually and energetically appeals to you. There's no wrong choices. And remember mm -hmm. that you are um, welcome to have more than one shirt. Yes, of course. <laughs> so if you can't decide, get two or get three of them because you know I'm telling you once you start wearing them, mm -hmm. you kind of don't want to take them off. You want to have a wisdom wear shirt on you. As, as often as possible. <laughs> you definitely do. Um, so is there any retreats coming up or anything else yes. you, you want to discuss? I have a retreat on the island of Kauai with um, the incomparable Susan Grace, who is my very dear friend and um, a, a magnificent astrologer. We're going to have a retreat together called Becoming the Rising starting September 21st through 24th. So it'll be four days on the island of Kauai with us, and there's an optional fifth day where you can come, and we're going to take a little island adventure together. And we are going to actually take you through past, present, future timelines, Atlantean energy, and where we are headed in the new paradigm, and give you the tools, give you the codes to step into all these new paradigms that are coming in so fast and embrace them and walk through them as, you know, the rising, because that, that's what we're doing collectively. We're rising up together. So how do we do that? Susan and I will um, teach you how. We're also going to take a catamaran, catamaran ride on the Nepali coast. Um, if you've been to Kauai, you know what I'm talking about. If yes. you haven't, um, the Nepali coast is an extraordinary place to, 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 to visit and receive the island of the energy. So we have this wonderful four or five day program planned um, here on Kauai that uh, you're all welcome. Mer Journeys is the website, merjourneys.com. We'll uh, talk to you a little bit about our daily schedule and, and registration. And all the links will be in the description. So if they can't write it down fast enough, I'm making sure it's in the description so they can get to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Jennifer, I'm really excited to have you as an affiliate for Wisdomware. 
Um, Jennifer is going to have her own special wisdom wear code where you can go enter that code on my website and get 10% off of your purchase. <laughs> so it's exciting to have you on board with that. I, like I said, I had to get it out there in every way I possibly can, and it's really an honor to be a part of it. Because, um, like I said, I studied light language and sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. I know how powerful and you know, it's like we all have it within us, and it's just knowing it and understanding it, yeah. embracing it can just make such a difference. Just embrace it. Don't overthink it. Don't think you got to go online and learn all this stuff about sacred geometry and the meaning, although if you did, you would find it really fascinating. Just be with it. I mean, that's really all that's required is just be present with it and allow it to do the work for you. And that's, that's another part of this whole energy is, like you said, co-creating. So the energy is working with you and you're not getting in your own way to stop the flow. Yeah, you know, the days of efforting are over. <laughs> From now on, it's just being, it's just showing up and being present and giving our sacred yes. Yeah. And as long as we are giving our sacred yes every day to spirit, you know, to God, to the life force of the universe, it will it will carry us right along. Yes, it will. And with that, Amira Beth, once again, always a pleasure to have you on air. The invitation is always open for you. You know that. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you so much. And with that, this is Jennifer Hellman. You can get in touch with me with at jenniferhellman.com. And with that, with each breath of air, we hope you gain new insights, imagination, and information. Till next time, have a beautiful day. Aloha. Aloha.